It's November 25th, 1993. We're at Texas Stadium for a Thanksgiving Day showdown between the hometown Dallas Cowboys and the visiting Miami Dolphins. Dallas controls the game with a one-point lead, but Miami's lining up for a field goal in the final seconds. A booming kick could give the Dolphins a chance to gobble up a statement win against the defending Super Bowl champions. Before we witness what comes next, there is so much to unpack. To do that, we need to rewind. Wait a second. I did say we're in Texas, right? I know it's November, but by the look of this snow-covered field, you would think we were in Buffalo. On this particular turkey day, I highly doubt either team is thankful for this weather. Dating back to 1966, the Cowboys have been a staple for the league's yearly Thanksgiving showcase. They earned their spot after TV networks recognized fans wanted to stuff their faces with a side of even more football. The Lions already held down a spot since 1934, but when the NFL came calling with a chance for another team to play, Dallas stepped up. Former Cowboys team president Tex Schramm wanted more national attention on his squad and volunteered just as long as Dallas was able to host the game. It turned out to be an immediate hit. Other team owners peeped the advantages that Dallas received from the yearly matchup and wanted in on the action, but other teams couldn't replicate the same type of attention. The Cowboys' favorable timetable was something that Dolphins head coach Don Shula acknowledged coming into this year's matchup. Hell, even Dallas head coach Jimmy Johnson admitted his team had a leg up. The benefit of having an extra day's rest in the sport that involves players constantly ramming into each other is obvious, but this season's matchup presented an external factor that neither team could control. Earlier this week, meteorologists expected a massive cold front to come through Central Texas, which is certainly unexpected seeing how this would mark the first time it's ever snowed in Dallas during an NFL game. The coaches seem to view the inclement weather from different perspectives. Johnson, who formerly coached at the University of Miami, thought Dallas would be better prepared than the team coming from the Sunshine State. Shula wouldn't use the weather as an excuse for his Dolphins. A bit ironic, seeing how members of his team blamed the poor conditions in their divisional round playoff loss a few seasons ago. No matter what the coaches said, it would have been impossible for either team to be fully ready. Nearly two hours before kickoff, the grounds crew removed the tarps from the field, allowing the sleep to immediately stick to the grass at well below freezing temperature. The vice president of Texas Stadium said the conditions were the roughest he'd ever seen. Something that was very apparent early in the game. After the Dolphins drove the field on their first possession, they had an opportunity to take an early 3-0 lead when Miami kicker Pete Stojanovic set up for a 44-yard field goal. As Stojanovic planted his foot for the kick, he slipped and fell hard on his ass, sending the ball in the line drive directly to a Cowboys defender. Stojanovic might have resembled a cartoon character dramatically slipping on a banana peel, but here he is now with a chance to snatch a win for his team. If he makes this kick, Miami could walk away with a 16-14 victory. A win is a win, but it's a low-scoring affair not typically seen from these two powerhouse offenses. And it ain't just the snow. This matchup has looked completely different from the expectations at the beginning of the season. Before the 1993 campaign kicked off, numerous journalists circled this matchup as an early Super Bowl preview. Dallas entered the year's defending champions, returning the core of a team that steamrolled their way to a championship. Offensively, with Emmitt Smith, Troy Aikman, and Michael Irvin, the Cowboys had a young trio of stars poised to dominate for years to come. On defense, Dallas fielded a stingy unit that forced nine turnovers in the most recent Super Bowl. Certainly an overpowering bunch, but the Dolphins were just as strong in their own respect. Miami hasn't won a Super Bowl since the 73 season, but behind star QB Dan Marino, they've been knocking on the door for the past decade. It's just that everything around Marino has been kinda meh. On defense, Miami repeatedly trotted out below average units, leaving Marino to outgun opponents, which wasn't a recipe for playoff success. Fortunately for Miami fans, in the past few years, the franchise finally invested in putting together a solid defense, and wouldn't you know it, during the 92 season, they made their first conference championship in seven years. 
the promise of two potent teams got journalists hyped. But what was supposed to be a showdown highlighting the game's top talent turned out to be something else. In week six, Dan Marino suffered a severe Achilles injury shutting him down for the rest of the year. Then after Marino's backup Scott Mitchell went down, the Finns turned to the NFL's oldest player, Steve DeBerg, who they signed a few weeks prior. The 39-year-old quarterback had considered calling it quits this season, but with a fresh start in Miami, he won his first game for a team that had a real shot at winning a chip. It's not an ideal situation to be in, but at that point in the season, Miami appeared to be in a better position than Dallas. Leading up to Thanksgiving, there was a chance that the Cowboys would be without both Aikman and Smith. Unlike Miami, Dallas couldn't reach the same achievements with their backup QB Bernie Kosar. What looked to be a duel between the NFL's elite quarterbacks just a couple months ago quickly appeared to be a prime time to Berg vs. Kozar mid-off. Fortunately for the Cowboys, their star signal caller got cleared for action. Aikman knew he couldn't come in and play to his usual standard, but was prepared to go out and compete, especially in the potential absence of his running mate in the backfield. More than Aikman, the Cowboys' offense runs through Smith. Emmitt missed the first two games of the season following a bitter contract dispute with owner Jerry Jones. Without him in the backfield, the Cowboys' offense looked lifeless as they took L's in both matchups. When he returned in Week 3, Dallas ran off seven straight wins handedly. That's just easy math. In today's game, Smith ultimately got the nod to play, but didn't look anything like his usual self. Cowboys rookie fullback Lincoln Coleman finishing with more rushing yards on fewer attempts says it all. With a limited Smith, Aikman had to be the leader, but he didn't look 100% either. His usual connection with Michael Irvin was non-existent, as Miami's defense did an excellent job taking away deep routes. Unexpectedly, the mighty Cowboys offense had to lean on rookie return specialist Kevin Williams. In the second quarter, Williams hauled in the four-yard touchdown after nearly busting his ass running the route. Then later housed a 64-yard punt return, weaving through sliding Miami defenders to give Dallas a 14-7 lead heading into halftime. However, after the break, it was all Miami. On their opening possession of the half, DeBerg engineered a 55-yard drive that ended in a field goal. In the fourth, fullback Keith Byers, who scored Miami's touchdown in the first quarter, came up huge again. On second and long, Byers caught a short pass and took it upfield for 27 yards into Dallas territory as he powered through a leg tackle and weaved through defenders. That long gain eventually set Miami up to drill another manageable field goal and cut the Cowboys' lead to one. More impressively than their offense finding a spark, Miami played suffocating defense in the second half, keeping Dallas off the board. Although, toward the end of the game, the Dolphins nearly shot themselves in the foot. Following another strong stop, Miami got the ball back at their own 8-yard line with a little over 4 minutes to play. Down one, a field goal would have given the Dolphins a lead, but rookie running back Terry Kirby got drilled and coughed up the ball where Dallas recovered it in Miami's territory. A short 32-yard field goal could have extended the Cowboys' lead to four, forcing Miami into needing a touchdown to win the game. Except, after clearing the snow and giving him a nice spot to strike the ball, Dallas kicker Eddie Murray shanked the field goal wide right. Miami took over deep in their own territory with a touch over two minutes remaining and one timeout. And old man DeBerg went to work. He diced up the Dallas defense, completing over 70% of his passes, including a pivotal third down conversion to none other than Keith Byers, where he scooted past Dallas defenders to get out of bounds and put Miami in field goal range. After falling on his behind in the first attempt, Sojanovic was spotted on the sideline changing cleats for better traction, and since the switch, he's been money. In his first four seasons with the Dolphins, Sojanovic has proven to be clutch, knocking in multiple late game kicks, including an overtime game winner last season against the New England Patriots in frigid temperatures. Crucial moments in trash weather are nothing new to him. Which brings us here. After making a fool of himself earlier, Stojanovic has a chance to be a hero. Dallas desperately needs him to miss this kick or somehow come up with a turnover. If there is anyone on this Cowboys defense that has a chance of jumping up and blocking this kick, 
is this guy right here, Leon Lett. With all eyes on this game during the holidays, Lett is searching for his own heroic moment. The Cowboys drafted defensive tackle Leon Lett in the seventh round back in 1991. While he missed the first half of his rookie year, in his second season, Lett blossomed into a force in the Cowboys' front, finishing the 92 season atop several defensive categories. He especially had a knack for deflecting passes at the line. In the postseason that year, Lett also had a huge impact, forcing several turnovers throughout the Cowboys' championship run. However, while Lett shined within Dallas circles, nationally, he was more known for a specific blunder. During the Cowboys' Super Bowl route over the Bills, Lett recovered a fourth quarter fumble and during the return, famously celebrated too soon, getting stripped before reaching the goal line. Luckily, Dallas had essentially sealed up the win and after the game, Lett could try to laugh it off, but the slip up kinda defined him. This season, Lett looked to improve on his breakout year, but fractured his right ankle in the third game that kept him out for five weeks. When he returned in week 11, Lett got right back to showing his star power with his known ability to swat passes. He's been quiet in this matchup against the Dolphins, but there's no greater moment than right now to redeem himself nationally by jumping up and getting one of his large paws on the ball to seal the win for his team. This matchup looks far different from the star-studded Super Bowl preview that journalists expected at the top of the season, but as it comes down to the final seconds on the snow-covered field, this Thanksgiving battle surely has the potential to be one of the league's most unforgettable holiday matchups. If Miami walks away with a road win against the defending champions, it'll instill even more confidence in the team proving the sky's the limit without their leader behind center. For Dallas, if they get a stop, It'll be an ugly victory, but one that proves they're still in the upper echelon of the league. It all comes down to this kick. Welcome to a moment in history. Doug Peterson to hold. Block. The Cowboys will win. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Yo, what? Let's get that TV turned back on. Leon, Leon, buddy, you simply can't do that in such a crucial moment. If the Cowboys defense had walked off the field and let the ball stop rolling, the block kick would have been ruled dead and Dallas would have escaped with a win. But as soon as Lett slid in and touched it, the ball became live and the fans recovered it on the one yard line. So welcome to a much, much simpler moment in history. Ah, poor Leon. I'm sure Thanksgiving has never been the same for him. If you enjoyed this video, we have plenty of more tasty content to check out. So don't forget to like and subscribe and keep on coming back.